on behalf of the organizing committee i welcome you all to the atal sponsored fdp on recent innovations and challenges in antenna technology held at diat pune it's a great pleasure for me to welcome our speaker dr dc pandey sir and i would like to introduce him in front of the participants dr dc pandey sir was outstanding scientist and associate director at electronics and radar development establishment LRDE and presently he is Dr. Raja Ramanna DRDO Distinguished Fellow. He received his bachelor and master degrees in electronics from Garhwal University, India in 1974 and 1976 respectively. Then he completed his PhD in Applied Physics in 1982 from University of Ilava. Dr. Pandey began his scientific career in 1981 with electronics and radar development establishment DRDO, Bangalore, where he was involved in the design and development of electronic electromagnetic interference control techniques for ground-based, airborne, and shipborne equipments and systems. He had designed, developed the passive and active antennas and test facilities for various radar programs of DRDO. He has published more than 150 research papers and 50 technical reports. He is a founder, life member of Society of EMC Engineers, presently the chairman of the society. He was the chairman of the IEEE EMC chapter in Bangalore. He was awarded Certificate of Achievements by SUMMA Foundation of USA in 1989. Commendable Certificate by Integrated Guided Missile Development Program in 1990. Meghanath Saha Memorial Award of the Institution of Electronics and Telecommunication Engineers in 1994, EMC Engineer of the Year 1998 of Society of EMC Engineers India, Lab Scientist of the Year 2003 by DRDO, National Science Day Award of 2004, DRDO Scientist of the Year Award 2005 by Prime Minister in 2006. DRDO Technology Group Award in 2011, Certificate of Achievements by the Chief of Naval Staff in 2014, and Professor S. N. Gose Award of IETE Allahabad Center in 2015, Certificate of Acknowledgement in 2016 by IEEE EMC Society. He has become HPEM Fellow since July 2016. So I welcome you, sir for this talk and thank you very much for accepting our invitation and uh, agree for delivering this talk. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Thank you. Thank you very much. And my uh, uh, sincere thanks to Professor KP Ray also that uh, giving me an opportunity to talk to you about the subject of EMI EMC this morning. So what I will do, I will share my uh, presentation. Yes, sure. I'm, I'm right. Are you able to see? Yes. It? Yes, sir. It is perfect. Okay. Okay. So now I will uh, discuss with you about the design consideration of electromagnetic compliance requirements for our uh, different type of the electronic system or subsystem or system what we design for the different, both for the defense and the civilian uh, requirements. So when we are talking about EMI-EMC, it is basically that okay, we are trying to control the electromagnetic spectrum. Control the electromagnetic spectrum, I mean that okay, we are trying to see that okay, we don't uh, interfere with each other. Because the electromagnetic spectrum is a natural resource which is available to us. And in the same particular frequency, if the various type of the systems are working, then that it will be very uh, tough situation. And particularly the RF and microwave at the moment, we are looking up to the 110 gigahertz of the frequency where that is the EMI EMC issues, which you are considering. It was up to 40 gigahertz earlier, but now it has gone up to the 110 gigahertz of the frequency. 
So what we have to do that, okay, we have to design our system in such a way that, okay, we should not have any type of the interference in this particular one. See, it is something like the similar to that, that okay, you have got a, a particular busy road in this, or there's a lot of vehicles if they are running that the, what the chaotic situation takes place of the jamming and other type of the thing. Similarly, in the electromagnetic spectrum, when we are using so many frequencies together, so then we have to control this one. <clears throat> And one of the most important thing point I will bring it that you cannot eliminate the electromagnetic interference issues. You can only reduce them to a particular label. And this particular label depends upon <clears throat> that in which platform you are working, right? So now suppose say for inside a car, you have got the so many type of the electronic system you are using with your laptop and other things. They should work within that particular environment properly. Right, so the electromagnetic electromagnetic energy will be coming. Electromagnetic emissions will be there. I will define all those terms what I am using it here. Or if you have got any question, you can interrupt me in the beginning itself. <clears throat> so then there is a intersystem problem from the you know car is interfering with this the other system. So this type of the problem. Or within the circuit that okay you have got the different type of the problem because either we are solving at the moment there is a problem in the our uh, man-packed uh, software-defined radio. So in this one, some similar type of the cards are there. There is the digital analog, there is the processing card, there is the waveform generation. So all they are interfering at the moment and we are got the tough problem. So this type of the intrasystem problem, what we talk about. So in fact, if you see that one, what the way the interference takes place, you yes, have some electromagnetic energy is put in the space. And suppose the aircraft is there, so the electromagnetic energy penetrates inside the aircraft through that, you know, different joints. It may penetrate through the, cano you know, canopy windows and canopies. And there are the different openings where from it can go inside the thing. Once it, the energy goes inside this particular system, then what happens is conducts through the different equipments, through the different cables, <clears throat> different interconnecting cable or harness. From there, that equipment, it reaches to the boards, and from boards, it reaches to the particular IC, and there can be a functional or operational damage can take place in this particular IC. So this is called the susceptibility to the electromagnetic environment. Okay. <clears throat> so then what we do that, okay, as far as the electronics, which is available electronics with the type of the speed of the, the devices, we will make the electronic circuit, but it has to be confined. These emissions, the electromagnetic emissions or its performance is to be controlled by the different type of the, you know, structure in which it, will, it is to be kept, right? You will have some type of the isolation will be provided. Even even in your mobile phones and other things, you see that there are what not inside that particular one. You have ASIC chips, you have got the number of antennas. Nowadays, the when the 5G comes, that okay, now type of the antenna, you must be studying somebody, maybe doing the research on that one, messy my most type of the thing. So you have to confine and that you have to do the a type of the joining techniques. You have to join them in a such a way that okay, and clustering them in such a way that okay, equal environment type of the thing are at one place, and that the other types are at a different place. There are different schemes which are there. <clears throat> Similarly, that okay, what we do that okay, different type of the even if the conventional your uh, no <clears throat> desktop computer, you have got the SNPs, you have got a different type of the module, so you have got the separations in that one. Even in our radar receivers, what we used to say that analog to digital, so to avoid the type of the interference, we used to do some type of the you know uh, shielding of these particular things, right? So that is the type of the things what you do to avoid the interference because see that when you are looking for the, you know, sensitivity of the communication system about minus 120 dBm type of the thing in our radar, we talk about the 100 and minus 130 dBm type of the signal. So digital circuit, which are the very noisy circuit, the noise and the ground bounds and all that thing gets coupled to the analog system, which are in the microvolt to millivolt is the sensitivity of the thing. And digital systems, as you say that, okay, the speed has gone so high. 
so that okay they are not no more that okay type of that in zero one zero one because if their spectra is a very important to be considered in the present electronic systems so electromagnetic environment is everywhere so we have to look into this particular aspects and see that okay in particularly that okay we have got in the uh, time you see that okay you are intentionally generating the electromagnetic environment by the different radiators you have got the natural resource natural source of the electromagnetic energy by the lightning the type of the thing it is a direct strike or the indirect effects of the lightning then we have got the different type of the radiators we have got the broadcasting waves you have got the electric trains with the p dot when it is making contact and discontact that time it generates the noise same time we have got the different type of the communication lines and that you know type of the different uh, wireless LAN and that uh, home appliances everywhere the electronics is there and when the electronics is there that will generate a lot of noise so now that okay 5g architecture whatever is the thing that okay it is going to get uh, introduced uh, very soon then we will going to see at the moment of course it is less than the 6 gigahertz it is 5.3 to 5.5 uh, gigahertz of the frequency but when it comes in the millimetric wave then further complication of the electromagnetic spectrum will take place in the defense when we talk about the thing we have got the other type of the thing we talk about the precipitation electric electricity of charging of the aircrafts we talk about the lightning uh, thing which is the direct or indirect effects of the lightning we talk about the hazard to the persons we talk about the nuclear electromagnetic pulse which gets generate you know nuclear detonation generates the very strong electromagnetic field which can um, uh, create the problem to the electron system then we talk about the hazard to the ordnance then hazard to the fuel then we have got you know different uh, you know very confined structure in the say for example in the ship we have got the different radar radiators uh, their communication systems on the uh, on the deck of the ship and the you know different places then we have got the different issues of the shielding bounding emi emc and all the things then uh, we have got one of the most important thing we have got the large number of emi emc standards and specification and this has to be complied to meet your requirement then the we have got the background electromagnetic environment more radiators will be there so the electromagnetic energy will be more so the environment will be more and then operation policy and acquisition what we talk in case of our uh, defense uh, systems so what happens is that one whenever we are designing a product whenever we are designing the, the require you know requirement or equipment performance first the thing you look into the mechanical design when you look in the mechanical design say in defense we look from the angle that okay in which platform it is there for us there are the five platforms five platforms means that okay we have got the spacecraft then we have got the uh, airborne, airborne means the aircraft, aircraft means the fixed wing aircraft, that's the rotating wing aircraft, then it is the UAVs, then we have got the microlights, all these type of the thing. Then we have got the ground-based systems, ground-based systems means that okay, they can be fixed systems or they can be mobile systems. Then we have got that, you know, ship bond system, then it is the carriers, you know, aircraft carrier type of the uh, platform or it is the gun boards type of the thing. So different type of the thing. Then we come into the submarines and earlier days submarines, okay, we are in the deep in the sea so that, okay, the electromagnetic energy cannot penetrate except in the very low frequency VLF and other type of the thing by which we used to do the communication. So these are the five platform depending upon the thing that, okay, mechanical design is done. And then it comes about the electrical design. Electrical design means that, okay, it is the 230 volt, 50 hertz, or is the 415 volt, 50 hertz, or it is the, you know, DC power supply, or it is the airborne system, 115 volt, 400 hertz type of the supplies, or it is the DC in the spacecraft. We have got that, you know, the solar cells and other things, it is the operates on the DCs. And in the ship-borne system, 
we are going to have the four wire system, not the ground is not there in that particular one. So the electrical design comes into the same time, the environmental design with the physically means that okay, where that particular equipment, what type of the temperature which can withstand, what is this operating temperature, which is this is the, you know, that um, uh, uh, when it is uh, kept that time, what type of the temperature, then the what altitude it is going to work like the Leh Ladakh and uh, Siachen type of the thing that, okay, there's a lot of uh, the less oxygen so that the de rating of the different uh, systems has to be done. Then the power requirement means the what type of the whether you are using the series regulator, whether you are using the you know switch mode power supply, whether you are using the DC to DC converters, because the, all that one results into some type of the requirement in the performance. Then that you know at the moment that okay you have got everything is the software you know you know you know different type of the thing is a computer based systems or the micro controller microprocessor or the FPGA based system all that particular one you have to write the software design so the software design becomes equally important and there is a requirement to meet this one. Then comes about the electromagnetic environment design means that okay what the type of electromagnetic environment generally this what happens that okay I see with the most of the people they don't consider this electromagnetic environment I will discuss in this particular talk with you that okay what the electromagnetic environment I am talking about. So we have got the electromagnetic environment from the natural resources we have got the man-made sources man-made means the intentional unintentional. Then we have got that, you know, sometime we intentionally generate the electromagnetic environment. So these are the type of the things what we have to design because see that whenever you are designing any electrical, electronic systems and other thing, if these uh, you know requirements are not defined in the beginning, so then it becomes a problem. Okay. So now that, okay, what is the requirement? See, electromagnetic interference, when we talk about that, is the un unwanted phenomena. And it is to be any designer try to avoid this particular one so that he designs his system in such a way that, okay, none of the electronic systems should interfere to other systems. Then the electromagnetic compatibility is the goal of a designer or a system engineer. Uh, this is to be achieved. Finally, that okay, you make a system and suppose you are designing some avionic system and it has to go in the, you know, a type of aircraft like that our LCA Tejas or say our MCA or say our uh, ALH in this type of the thing, if it is creating the problem and it is not compatible in that electromagnetic environment of that particular aircraft or say helicopter or say any type of the UAVs or say wherever the thing. So it can never be inducted into the thing that the inspection agencies or the qualifying agency will never clear these particular systems to be in call in, to be placed into that particular platform. <laughs> So now I will give you some definitions of the thing. See, first the thing that we start with the noise, any electrical signal in any circuit other than the desired signal is called the noise, right? It called the noise. Then the electromagnetic interference, when the electromagnetic signal, it is electrical, magnetic or electromagnetic, whatever the way you want to take it, because see that when is a time varying signal, electrical field will generate magnetic, magnetic will generate electrical signals. And when it, uh, you know, impairs the functioning of any electronic equipments or any electronic systems and other things, then we say that it is the electromagnetic interference. It is the electromagnetic interference. Then comes the electromagnetic compatibility. It is that, you know, you know, ability, like that you have got so many ability. You say, look after reliability, maintainability, vulnerability. You know, there are some 18 abilities of an electronic system. So what we look for that one. In that one, electromagnetic compatibility, also one of the ability of an electronic system. It has got two things. It should function in its operational environment without creating any problem to the other systems which are present or it should not get affected with the electromagnetic environment which is there. It means that it, has, it should have both the thing. It should be a, not a nuisance in the environment whether so it should not have the electromagnetic emissions more than a particular specified label. And second one that uh, the electromagnetic environment which is present there, it should not create the problem to that. Now I talk about the thing, what is the electromagnetic environment? 
electromagnetic environment essentially consisting of the radiated and the conducted energy in a system right so that when that as it you know when that any electronic system is powered so that what happens that okay it is a time varying signals will start radiating the energy into the environment and it is if it is interconnected with the power or say interconnecting cable these conducted uh, emissions will also go into the in other systems and that they may result into the susceptibility of the system then the, we talk about the electromagnetic emission. These emissions uh, uh, in, uh, essentially pertains to the interference uh, and they cause the interference in the any product or any equipment, right? <clears throat> and susceptibility, susceptibility is the response of an electronic system when it is exposed to the electromagnetic environment. Right. It is a response. Just uh, get differentiated between the susceptibility and the vulnerability. So susceptibility is the response. Any electronic system, whenever it is exposed to the electromagnetic environment, it will have a response. And when this response becomes more than the threshold level, that the working threshold level of that particular equipment, then it becomes the vulnerable. It means the system has become vulnerable. It is called the vulnerability of the system. Once the system has become vulnerable, it will result into the failure, right? It can result into the failure of the systems. You know, that response has gone more than its threshold level, then it becomes the vulnerable. And when the vulnerable means that it will start failing, the system will start failing. There can be the three type of the failure first is called the catastrophic failure means there is something is burned or say that it cannot circuit cannot operate right and under is the parametric failure parametric failure is the, the failure in which the system still works but it doesn't work is the full efficiency it works on the lesser efficiency say for example you have got the one kilowatt of the amplifier which is the one kilowatt amplifier you can't get from the just uh, from some milliwatt so there are this is a pre amplifiers type of the thing there are some maybe 10 watt of the amplifier which uh, amplified to give the one kilowatt of the thing so one kilowatt of the you know particular you know class c or class a b whichever the type of the amplifier you have got if it is gone bad so it will work only 10 watt of the thing but it is still working but not in its full efficiency that is called the parametric failure then uh, we refer about the state failure means that it got the latch up or latching up of the circuit or say under a change in the state of the circuit is called the state and now the degradation degradation is the performance degradation is the deterioration of some of the features of the system in response to an undesired electromagnetic environment undesired electromagnetic environment and finally degradation are two type of the thing in any system first degradation is called the functional damage it refers to the permanent damage permanent uh, damage in the uh, circuit or in the uh, subsystems or the system and operational ups upset means is a temporary upset or temporary impairment so once that okay system like that okay your system got latch up or say the type of the thing so then when you switch on and off uh, that it comes back that is called the operational upset but uh, both the functional damage and operational upset has got its own significance in the depending upon the which system you are working right in which system you are working that depends upon the thing in the missiles and other thing the operational upset is a very dangerous thing because see that it just latch up to the particular one, but it doesn't give the command that, okay, the system is failed so that it goes to the redundant systems. So, and uh, there's nothing like that you can do in the missiles and uh, this type of the systems. So there's operational offset is equally important in that case. So that, okay, that what the EMI is, will cause you that, okay, you have got the annoying effect means that it is the momentary disturbance, your radio gets disturbed, your TV gets disturbed, you have caused the talk in the conversation and other thing, that a type of annoying effects which is given. Then that we have got the disturbing effects, unwanted reset of the computer, digital equipment. Uh, the type of the thing change of the status of the setting of the particular system that is called a disturbing effect <laughs> then we have got the catastrophic effect means that you have lost the data you have the equipment uh, components have been burned 
or say biological hazard is also to some extent that okay, when the fields are very strong, then that there is a biological hazard is equally important. So I will just, just uh, you know, that uh, this particular type of the course, when I give it to that, you know, long course and other things, that time, you know, uh, various people are there, but uh, as you are the faculty, you are the MMI, you know, MTech and the PhD students and other thing, I won't go in this particular definition. But okay, we use the units in the case of the EMIMC measurement, we use the for the voltage measurement, we measured in the dv microvolt particularly the voltage what we measure in case of the dv microvolt type of the measurement when we are measuring the voltage okay it is with the along in any systems uh, if you are trying to do we measure because that our specification and standards which have been given in this one are depending upon the uh, dv microvolt and the other one is that okay when we are measuring the current we measure in terms of the dv microampere and that that is a dv micro ampere that okay in terms of the thing because the you know whatever the type of the system you are using whichever type of the probe you are using then you require that you know transfer function of that probe to get the current value of the thing so in the case of the when you are measuring the current that okay we measure the because see that uh, your uh, EMI receiver or say spectrum analyzer or say any type of the uh, you know selective voltmeter will be measuring this voltage in terms of the dv microvolt because see that it is the current probe current probe transfers the uh, current to the voltage current probe transfers the current to the voltage it means that okay current has got transfer means that okay there's a transfer function and that is called the jet t and that is called the uh, you know uh, probe correction factor type of the thing so it's a jet t <clears throat> Uh, then we, uh, the, I will uh, use for the radiated uh, EMI problem, particularly in the case of radiated, this particular one, I talk, you know, more about the thing that, okay, near field and far field in the case of the, uh, the different type of the system, because the shielding effectiveness when we are trying to, uh, the, when we are doing the shielding of a particular system to reduce the EMI EMC in that case, this near field and far field. So as the antenna people, you have got the different definition of the near field and the far field. But I will uh, try to, I will try to, <clears throat> I will uh, try to uh, tell you that, okay, that see, depending upon the, depending upon the wave impedance of the, uh, 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 of the of the radiating source will uh, tell about the thing. So what is uh, this particular one is the thing when the radiator when the radiator is less than the wavelength when the radiator is the less than the wavelength then it is near field to far field boundary is r is equal to lambda by two pi. See, from the less than the lambda by, you know, that lambda by 2 pi, this is called the near field. And when it is more than the lambda by 2 pi, we talk in terms of the thing, it is the far field. Near field means that, okay, the wave impedance ratio of E by H is not the constant, that is a 377 ohm, right? The ratio of the electric field in the, or it is not the free space impedance. So it is less than the, you know, in the near field region of the thing, radiator, when the dimension is small, it is the high impedance and the low impedance. Then we will discuss it slightly. I will give you some idea of that. And if the dimension of the radiator is larger than the wavelength, if the dimension of the radiator is larger than the wavelength, then it is d squared by 2 lambda. Then it is d squared by 2 lambda. Right, then it is uh, d square by 2 lambda, so that it is nearly about, say, when the d is equal to lambda by 2, it comes about, say, lambda by 8 of the dimension. So, when the dimension is small, because the you are MTech student, and I think you must be coming upon the doublet, you know, the radiation, these are the, the, you know, I don't mind to, you know, put these equations here, so that, okay, what the way that, okay, you know, non-radiating, radial electric field, it is the um, uh, 
uh, the azimuth magnetic field and the e theta field that okay that is the <clears throat> elevation field so that e theta and s phi is basically the radiation field and the er is the non radiating type of the field so that is near field type of the things what you so there are a lot of analysis and other thing but what i wanted to tell you is that thing that uh, depending upon the source which radiates suppose it you know electric doublet type of the system is there it has got the larger its impedance is uh, high because it is the voltage source so the source impedance is high v by i so because i will be very small so that what happens then the voltage source is there so the electric field is e theta is component is going to be more and the current is less than the uh, h phi component is going to be low so that in the particular uh, region e theta by h phi e theta by h phi is going to be less than is going to be very high because the, then the 377 ohm so this is the thing high impedance source the a monopole antenna is the high impedance source because see that uh, that when uh, that uh, shielding of the items is to be done because that all the metallic structures are the low impedance sources are the low impedance sources so what happens then when the electric field falls on that one it gets reflected from that this is the way that okay shielding is being achieved by that you know enclosing the metallic structure so that, that depends upon that okay what the type of the radiator you have got inside the particular circuit <clears throat> so if it is the dipole uh, type of the thing then okay is the high impedance uh, source so the field voltage you know impedance or the wave impedance is also going to be the high impedance but when it is a current loop okay the current source or the loop type of the radiator your current is you know loop type of radiator you drive by the current so the, your uh, you know source impedance is going to be the smaller because the current is more and the voltage is less so in that case that you know that h phi component that the magnetic uh, azimuth component is going to our elevation component of the electric field is going to be lower so that okay it is going to be the low impedance so what is uh, i'm concluding at this particular place is the thing that okay if it is a magnetic source or say magnetic dipole source that the impedance of the wave is the smaller as compared to the free space impedance and it increases one you know r times and reaches to about 377 at a distance of lambda by 2 pi right at a distance of lambda by 2 pi in the case of the high impedance electric field that okay it falls upon one upon r times and reaches to 377 at lambda by 2 pi there is a you know asymptotic uh, transition takes place so then it becomes the 377 ohm. So in the case of the thing, when the radiators are very small, particularly in the PCBs or say in your circuits and other places, the dimension of the radiation, if you are talking about the 30 megahertz of the frequency, your wavelength is about uh, 10 meters, right? So 10 meters, if you see that what the type of the radiator, 10 meters is the very big. So all the type of that, you know, circuits inside the PCB or say inside the different digital circuits or say, you know, small circuits are going to be in the low frequencies are going to be in the low impedance and the high impedance has to be considered separately because that will decide how you are solving the problem. But uh, when you talk about saying, okay, this must be, you must have that you are already doing the course of antenna. This is a uh, uh, four point, you know, what the way that, okay, wave is, uh, all waves are spherical. There's nothing like the plane wave. It is with respect to the, you know, antenna which receives this. It means that, okay, when the spherical wave and we have got an antenna about this particular size so that this portion will be reaching after the, k lambda times to this one and that you know center portion will reach to that one this particular will give the phase difference phase error so accordingly the phase error you can uh, find out that okay what the type of the in the near field you will have got the in the fractional zone you will have the different type of the problem so the for the 1 dv error that the okay, distance is d square by 2 lambda or say d square by uh, d square by 2 lambda is the 1 dB error and 0.3 dB error you have the d square by, and that okay most of the time you define that okay for the phase error of 0.1 dB 
uh, phase error of 22.5 degrees, another thing, 2, uh, 2D square by lambda, the, what the far field condition. Uh, so generally that antenna measurements and other thing, whenever you are carrying out the thing, you are in the far field or near field. This is the way that, okay, when the dimension of the antenna is more than the wavelength. <clears throat> Uh, so then we have got something, uh, the electric field that we measure, electric field we measure in terms of the, with reference to uh, one microvolt, so that is the e dV microvolt per meter. And the dV microvolt per meter, generally that it can be converted for the, if you are measuring the power density, then that okay, it is the 160 for the 373 space uh, type of the thing. But one of the most important parameter or the, uh, Magnetic field we measure in terms of the dV microampere per meter, or we measure some, sometimes the dV pico tesla is also the unit what we use in the case of uh, magnetic field measurement. So that what I'm trying to say that okay, whenever you come across the uh, EMI EMC measurement or the specification standards, these are the type of the units being used. I have given all this conversion. I can share my presentation to you, or otherwise it must be there in the diet to people. So even if it is not there, I can do. So one of the most important parameter which we define in case of the EMI MC measurement is the antenna correction factor. Antenna correction factor is the transfer function. Is the uh, transfer function because either what is happening that you can't measure the electric field in absolute, right? You have to measure that in terms of the voltage you measure and that what is happening, the space where the electric field is there. So you have converted the electric field in terms of the two terminal networks or to, you know, a, a selective voltmeter or EMI receiver or say any type of the receivers. You have measured the voltage, right? Or you measure the current or, the, you know, then you derive voltage or current of the 50 ohm, then you can get the power also. So then the, the antennas, what we use in the case of the EMI EMC measurement, that antenna transfers that you know electric field to the voltage. And depending upon this antenna factor, we know that okay, what is the type of the field there in the space? Suppose a radiator is there at a distance three meter. If I am measuring what is the field, what had happened, I will be measuring the voltage that is in dV microvolt per meter and antenna correction factor which is the, you know, the figure of merit of any antenna. Lesser the antenna correction factor, it is better the antenna for the measurement. Because either you are going to measure right from the 25 hertz to the 40 gigahertz or the 110 gigahertz of the frequencies, then you can think that, okay, how many type of the antennas you use. We use the loop antennas in the low frequency for the magnetic field. For the electric field, we use the 41-inch rod antenna. There's a capacitive antenna. Then we use the biconical antenna. That is the, you know, some 20 megahertz to the 200 megahertz. From the 200 megahertz onwards, we use the log periodic antenna, log conical antenna, and the double ridged horn antenna also we, we use in the milli standard. It has been specified. After uh, the uh, 18 or the 1 gigahertz to 18 gigahertz, we use the, the double ridged horn antenna. And after 18 to 26 gigahertz or say 40 gigahertz, we have got the different type of the horn antennas. So <clears throat> how good that thing, because see that you are measuring from the right from 25 megahertz to the 25 hertz to the 40 gigahertz, say for example. So how many type of the antennas you can you are using? You can make the high gain antennas or the low antenna correction factor, but that okay for each uh, measurement, you have to change the antenna. You cannot have so many antenna switching units. So that's why that okay, that uh, antenna factor, this broadband antenna, broadband means uh, in terms of the frequency, not the, they are not the impulsive uh, broadband antenna. They are that, you know, the conventional that what the way we did. So in the case of that, okay, transmitter antenna, what you are applying, you are applying the voltage and generating the field so that E by V, that is called the transfer antenna factors. So signal generator, you applied the voltage, we did, and that, okay, what the field, that particular is the transfer function of the antenna. And the, in the case of the receiver, that, okay, field, which has been received by that one and the voltage. So this is the antenna transfer factor. Of course, the antenna transfer factor depends upon the high, you know, that effective height and the, uh, uh, you know, of the antenna or uh, effective uh, antenna efficiency. 
by that one also you can calculate because the, these are the type of the things what uh, it can be done because the effective height is not exactly the length of the antenna it is not the electrical length of the antenna because either you must be studying in your uh, antenna you know if you are studying from Bal, you know jordan's book or say ba, you know balani's book all these particular parameter must be coming for your dipole or monopole or say lambda by two lambda by four type of the antenna so whatever the 41 inch rod antenna if he has got the one meter high we its effective height is only 0.5 meter so you can get the antenna factor from this particular relation or for the free space you can get it is that you know in terms of the gain also you can get this particular one. I will uh, suggest that okay, you try this exercise to find out the antenna factor uh, by that because see that um, uh, this uh, generally is, uh, comes as a question to be given for the for the examinations and other thing. <laughs> so now that when we are talking about this, uh, you know, nature of the EMI EMC, we have got the EMI which is the transient in nature. And we have got the intermittent, which is comes and goes, and some noise, which is coming the continuously. So one of the most uh, important thing is the transient is the one of the important aspects of that thing. Whenever we are studying, there's a transient noise that, okay, one of the most important thing, either you use the Fourier transform or you use the Laplace transform to get its frequency components. Because see, you have to get the frequency component, then you design. Suppose in the digital system also, see, 1 by pi tau r is the frequency of the, of in the digital system, we say that this is the frequency component which are available. This tau r, 1 by pi tau r, tau r means the rise time of the pulse. Because no pulse is a square pulse. They are all trapezoid type of the pulses. So you have to find out how much is the frequency, because see, these are the, information which I have just given into that one four year series I'll say that we keep on doing all this transformation so uh, to get that okay how much component is to be done because see, whenever you are designing a circuit in time domain it has got one this is a no you know that we design from the time domain circuit from the need non-linearity point of view for the linear point of view, we require the frequency components of the thing because see that whenever that any of our uh, inductor, capacitor or say the, east, uh, the particular inductor, capacitors in the circuit, if it is coming into that one, that is uh, response is in the frequency domain. So we should know about the thing, even designing the different type of the, uh, you know, the, uh, type of protection for the ventilations and other thing we designed that you know waveguide below cutoff so that also depends upon the what the type of frequency components in that one we don't have that type of the time domain of course we do the analysis because the, those people who are interested those who are studying about the impulse radiating antennas iras there we talk in terms you know near field far field in terms of the time domain and in terms of the impulsive bandwidth that's why that okay nowadays we define that okay uh, these high power electromagnetics people define that uh, 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 you know the bandwidth in the hypo band hypo band means that okay is the narrow band it is the less than the one percent of the bandwidth then we uh, discuss about the massive massive band uh, massive band massive band means that the bandwidth is the percentage bandwidth the hundred percent then we talk about the hyper band, then the percentage bandwidth is about the 100 and, uh, 100 and, uh, six, uh, 163.4 percent. And then when it's a super uh, hyper band means we talk about the uh, less than the two, 163.4 to 400. So these are the type of the bandwidth what we are discussing nowadays in case of our high power electromagnetics, particularly the IEMI, Intentional Generated Electromagnetic Interference and other things. Anyway, that okay, I was talking about the transient. Transient, what we try to define that okay is a duty cycle of the emitting source with the equivalent pulse or impulse width of the 50% height and the repetition frequency, this particular relation, if the delta, I mean the duty cycle of the emitting source is less than the 10 to the power minus, 
the switching reactive load is less than 10 to the power minus 5 incidental emitting uh, transients sources if it's to less than 10 to the power minus 5 uh, for radars and other thing it is mostly greater than 10 to the power minus 3 for clock uh, computer clocks under 10 to the power minus 1 and sources are not regarded as the transmitting emitting sources so i have got the list of the different type of the thing the duty cycles of the different uh, devices or the different uh, components which are switching like the 2k fluorescent lamp we have got 10 to the power minus 5 in pass bandwidth 10 to the minus or pass if it is that, that, that the duty cycle so that gives a transient so accordingly what that the type of the thing what you are getting in the thing so the source is late machine wall copy uh, machine all this type of the thing then uh, we have got the spectrum occupancy okay how much spectrum these type of transients are uh, occupying uh, i will just come out of this particular of course that okay for particularly for the uh, nuclear electromagnetic pulse what the type of the frequency components in this one will be there that particular one is, is to be seen is spectrum then we see in the lightning stroke also that whether it's the direct or indirect effect what type of the lightning it is the double exponential pulse in the time domain but in the frequency domain you have got the this type of the distribution in the by that you can see it is from the Bode's plot type of the thing now, this particular one I will define from the EMI EMC point of view. There is a narrow band and broadband. See, we define in the case of the narrow band and broadband emission in the EMI EMC, narrow band emissions are those emissions that, that the, when the bandwidth of the when the bandwidth of the receiver, when the this is the bandwidth of the receiver, and this is the noise bandwidth. Then this particular uh, noise we'll call as the narrow, you know, broadband noise. When the bandwidth of the noise is larger than the bandwidth of the receiver, then it is called the broadband noise. When the noise of the uh, noise is lesser than the bandwidth of the receiver, then it is called the narrow band noise. And you can see that, okay, in spectrum analyzer, when you have got the broadband signal, when you, uh, you know, uh, change the resolution bandwidth, then you can see that, okay, there is a change in the amplitude of the signal. It means it is, if I take that this uh, bandwidth is slightly bigger and other thing, then it will take the larger the noise. So what we call as the bandwidth correction factor, right? Then we call as the bandwidth correction factor is to be added. Right. Now the bandwidth correction factor is to be added. How much it is to be added? It is 20 log it is to be added or is it 10 log is to be added? It depends upon the type of the noise what you have got. One is called the coherent signal or uh, signal or the emission. Coherent signal means that okay, signals which are emitting, they are in the same in the phase. Right. They are in the same in the phase. So there is uh, that type of the noise is called the broadband noise that is definitely a, but is a coherent broad, broadband noise like that okay we have got the you know the computer clocks radar and then pulse code modulation telemetry and all this type of the coherent so in this particular case that our addition of the bandwidth correspondence 20 log f1 by f2 means the whatever bandwidth you are doing that one but incoherent uh, signal like that, okay, incoherent signal, you don't know from the one signal to the other signal what is the phase, right? So like that, we have got the example of the gas lamps, we have got the noise diodes, black bodies, including the internal receiver noise, corona discharge, all, even, even the thermal noise, which is generating, which is the one of the most important thing for the receiver people or, say, you know, the uh, systems, what we are doing, like that, uh, we have got the, that is the narrow band. So what we do in the case of the coherent broadband noise, we add the 20 log of the bandwidth correction factor or in case of the, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the noise uh, which is there, it is the, you know, we measure in terms of the power, in terms of the voltage, it becomes the square of the power, right? There is a noise in power we measure and then if the voltage is become the square root, it twice root means that okay bandwidth correction will be 10 dB. So that you have to be very careful whenever you are adding the bandwidth correction factors and 
you can see this particular one whenever you are using the spectrum analyzer whenever that okay you are changing the bandwidth from the uh, 3 kilohertz to 1 kilohertz the noise floor how much it is going to change that one that itself will give you the uh, good uh, experiment today that uh, whenever you are using that one that you can always see uh, oh what happened sorry sorry <clears throat> Uh, so, uh, we have got now the type of the uh, types of the EMI. Now that when we talk about the types of the EMI, we have got the two type of the uh, two types of the EMI. One we call as the intersystem EMI problems. EM intersystem means that within the system the problem which takes place that we call as the intersystem, right? So intersystem means within this particular one, the problem is taking place, this particular system. And intersystem means among the systems, right? Among the system, if the interference is taking place, we call as a uh, intersystem problem. And intersystem and the intersystem problems are completely two different, uh, you know, uh, uh, requirements. Intersystem problem is the designer's problem, right? Designer has to design the system for the thing. He's, within his system, that okay, he should not face that any EMI EMC problem. So he will use the all the techniques used in the intrasystem problem. But in the case of the intersystem problems, the person uh, is the thing. It is called the management problem. You can't say that okay, I'm getting interfered from the, this one. Oh, you don't radiate your radar. You don't do you know this type of the activities because I am getting interfered and other thing. That the type of the thing is slightly different. So we have got, you know, this type of the um, inter, uh, uh, system problem means that you have got antennas, it's a different type of, suppose a shelter is there, in that one there are so many equipment, you know, autopilot control, output display, navigation receiver in the case of the, you know, in the aircraft inside uh, that one. You have got the generator regulator, you have power, power supply, so the antennas can get coupled to the different type of the power supply cable, this can get coupled to the different navigation system, antenna to antenna couple can take place, outside of world also that this type, so that okay, different type of the coupling which can take place in this one. So this is the type of the um, inter-system EMI problems. So the one system can interfere with the thing, but today's system are not so. This is the thing when I joined in 81, 82, we, we used to talk about, this is a, such a simplest system type of the thing we used to have. Most of the time this you know, microwave tower is interfering with some radar signals or say some power line interference is taking some communications or say some type of the uh, TV stations are getting interfered. So the life was very thin because the radiators are not so many. And that time we used to have that, okay, most of the time the radar or the microwave receiver, microwave towers, we have got the most of the problem. So, the, you know, that noise when that, you know, from the radar transmitter, radar transmitter, the noise is going into the receiver of the microwave receiver. It doesn't go in the thing, it is going in some of the spurious of the receiver. Right, some spurious of the receiver, then that type of interference, and the other one is some harmonics of the, uh, you know, that uh, radar can fall in the receiver selective curve, so that that type of the interference used to be there. So we used to solve so many. But today you see that okay at the airport control center itself, what not the type of the radiation nearby that one? You have got the VLF communication, you have got the millimetric communication, you have got the all the time you have got the satellite communication you know gps all the type of the thing whenever you are trying to see that particular it is the more complicated day by day and in our defense also that okay you know network centric uh you know uh warfare what the type of the battlefield service and what not the type of radiator you have got the all the airborne system we have got the ground-based systems we have got the in the you know missiles with the radars which are moving along the with the the troops so that okay dynamically changing all electromagnetic environment that okay how you because that today's electromagnetic spectrum control is the one of the most important aspect because particularly in the battle uh, space management if the spectrum is not controlled properly so that okay you will have the fratricide you will lose the war so the spectrum control because everything depends upon the spectrum i will just 
skip these things. One of the most important thing is the EMI EMC subject is a very interdisciplinary subject. And because see that it talks about the different platforms of the, the inter-system EMI problems in, in the different platform, whether you are in the spacecraft, whether you are in the aircraft, whether you're ground based, whether it's ship or submarines, or in the civilian environment also, it talks about the thing, whether you are in the residential area, whether you are in the commercial area, or whether you are in the industrial area. Then the intra-system problem means the type of the you know problems which are happening that okay within the system there are so many you want a digital analog everything power supply you know some type of the switching and in the same circuit you want to have and the other one is the specification and standards has been made the specification and standards has been made as I told you that okay you cannot eliminate the EMI EMC you can reduce it to the particular label. And depending upon the which platform you are working, the standards and specification has been made first depending upon the platform. Both for the five, I told you there are the five platforms in the case of the uh, defense. And similarly, the civilian, we have got the residential areas, uh, you know, commercial area and the industrial area. Then standards, first the thing, okay, upon the platform, upon the, you know, that then it depends upon the country wise. Each country has got its own. See that uh, our, uh, when we talk about the defense specification from the US, it comes about the milli standard. And uh, like that, okay, we have got the VG standard in case of the G Germany. Similarly, we have got the China has got, uh, Japan has got its own specification. And uh, the earlier the days, USSR, now that, okay, it is, uh, you know, the, the Russia and that all Eastern country, the, these people are having the ghost specification. So if you see that, okay, sometime if you list out these particular type of the specification, you will see that there are something more than the 200 to 300 standards and specification, which is applicable to for which equipments and other thing. It is a very, very tough task for the people, those who are expert in this one. Then uh, analysis and prediction has gone the thing. Nowadays that, okay, whenever that earlier days, we used to make a prototype A, prototype B, and then the pro production model or say the trial model type of the thing. Nowadays that, okay, it is not being done that way because uh, your computational electromagnetic tools have become so powerful, so powerful with the HPC or say GUI based systems, you can predict that the noise within plus minus 2 dB. Earlier it used to be plus minus 10 dB or plus minus 12 dB of the axis with the type of the thing. Today's the models, whether you are using the, um, uh, your HFSS, you are using the CST, you are using the ANSYS, uh, that one, you are using the FICO, you are using the COMSOL, you are using the multiphysics, or say you are, you know, there are so many t t techniques are there. So they can predict the EMI EMC in the beginning and you can take the precautions in the thing. This particular field is a very strong and today I feel everybody should have the thing. But one of the most important thing is that it should not the thing that okay your model, use the better model for to solve the problem accordingly, right? you know that uh, you are using the method of movement, you are using the finite element method, you are using that, you know, MLFM uh, method, or say you are using the hybrid technique, you are using the UTD, GTD, uh, you know, type of the asymptotic methods, but use them very accurately. Because see that, you know, otherwise it is the garbage in by garbage out on there. That's why the IEEE has come out with the validation of this particular type of the tools and other things. These are the standards which are available. <clears throat> and the power uh, system EMC is the other particular one. One of the most uh, important aspects is a lot of people work on the power system, particularly the Swiss mode power supply and other thing. I'm not saying that, okay, anytime any Swiss mode power supply which is coming and it meets the EMI EMC requirement both for civilian as well as the military. This is the one of the most important. Yes, it is, reduces the volume to weight uh, requirement is very good. It reduces the magnetics very much, but uh, size and uh, weight. But same time, it is the EMIMC and that okay, designing the filters for uh, uh, power systems, particularly the Swiss mode power supply, DC DC converters, is the very everywhere. You know, this is the very because that by 
you know, not meeting the requirements means that your project gets delayed. Nobody gives you so much of the time today in the anywhere. Then you have got the antennas, as I told, was telling you different type of the antennas which we are using in the EMIMC measurements. Then the diagnostic tools, whether these type of the antennas cannot do the diagnosis. It requires a small type of the sniffer probes, a small type of the current probes, a small type of the sensors by which you can diagnose the problem. Then only you can identify where from the problem is coming. Then the measurement systems is also very good because the electromagnetic measurement is always a challenging task. Then the, there are the different type of the components. You have got the wear arrester, gas arresters, you have got the uh, tan jobs, different type of the material, then the nano material for the shielding, you have got the honeycombs, you have got the EMI gaskets. EMI gaskets itself is a thousand type of the EMI gaskets and all. Then we have got the allied topics about the non, you know, non nuclear electromagnetic pulse, non nuclear electromagnet, high power microwave weapons. Then we have got the, the you know, the tempest type of the biological parts of the radiation. They, you know, that is some other thing I am to see. Now that okay, there is a just for the to change you because uh, continuously I am talking and that okay there's you know so many things uh, what I am talking so I will just uh, give you some uh, uh, break from that you are continuous then I will start again the technical thing so first the thing that okay we talk about the frostal first US jet aircraft has got that uh, you know major tragedy during the Vietnam war so what had happened when that okay it has got the L band transmitter uh, for the radar which was about say more than two megawatts of the peak power, when the aircraft was uh, landing on this uh, carrier. So what had happened that you know this particular field got coupled to the umbilical cord of that miss missile, which was uh, in the aircrafts because it due to the improper shielding of that. And then what had happened that uh, missile or say the rocket came out of that one and hitting the other aircraft. So there are the 32 aircraft lost, 134 casualties, 172 million loss. Well, this was the one of the most uh, important, um, uh, you know, that case history of the, this one. And the um, other one is the Black Hack helicopter. This has got a digital flyby wire system, which is the unstable system. So what had happened is that thing initial that okay is induction. It is one of the best helicopters so far that any in the in the world has been made with the thing because you know the people those who have seen the Aero India so in Bangalore and then 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 they can have it. It keeps on coming every year so that whenever the Aero India is there, it keeps on coming. So this also got a lot of incidents were there in this particular one flying very close to the uh, high power radiator. Another thing there was a lot of, of, of uh, digital flyby wire system when they do the EMI EMC testing of the thing and when they expose this whole bird in the, in the that type of the field. There are something 300 people, those who are not monitoring the all the performance parameters of this helicopter at a distance of three kilometer by the fiber optic cable, or say that what they take all the signals from there is a very, you know, interesting uh, thing. Then we have got the Torando, this uh, aircraft when, when it was flying in the Munich, uh, where that, you know, American voice of American uh, broadcast and uh, they got crashed, two pilot killed in this particular accident. And then uh, I didn't show you uh, this um, Sheffield one is the other uh, interesting parameter. It is the British ship Sheffield uh, destroyer class of the thing. It was uh, during the Argentina war in the, um, during that time, whatever, 1982, that Thing that they call the Falkland Wars also. So in this one that okay that this destroyer has got that anti-missile defense system means that that the radar was there and uh, what was happening that okay and that they have got the communication with the Harriers uh, you know jet aircrafts by ground to air communication to with them so at the same time they have got the sea uh, band communication to the NATO forces so they can, they, when that, okay, anti-missile defense system was 
on. So that time the communication they cannot have. Or say when they have the communication uh, with the aircraft or the, with the, the other NATO forces through in the C band of the satellite one. So that time they have to switch off the anti missile defense system. So what had happened that uh, Argentina forces understood why they are switching off this particular ASMD and other thing. And that is the time they understood there is something is the frequency problem. I mean that, okay, they have got the interference problem. And that time they fired the exotic missile and this particular British Sheff Sheffield uh, drone. And this was the decision for the uh, Argentina winning the war and the NATO forces, so the UK lost the war in the term. And there are so many case histories I have got, okay, the, this one that... Mm. I will now come to the thing. This is the basic. Now we will come to the again to the <clears throat> technical point of view from the thing. It is not the EMIMC is no more a black magic. It is the type of the thing is, is the science. So in the interference, whenever the thing, whatever the, the thing is there, there is always a source which generates the electromagnetic environment, right? And this electromagnetic environment, I told you, it consisting of the conducted and the radiated emissions. And that there is a receptor which will be receiving this type of that uh, electromagnetic environment from this uh, source. And that the, we say that culprit means that the one is generating the noise and there is the uh, victim which is receptor. And from this goes to the receptor, the noise goes to the transfer functions or say conducting media or say that uh, the, some media as a coupling media, what we call this. So this is the thing when it's energy is directly coupling from this to the uh, receptor. So then we call it is a radiated coupling ch channels. When it is conducting through the, the from the culprit to the victim, then we call it the conducted channel. And we will try to identify which are these uh, sources, which are these receptors, and which are these coupling channels. And then, okay, then how to solve this particular one? Because see that I have got under uh, uh, nearly 35 minutes to talk uh, the thing, so we will start with it. Now, when we talk about the sources of the energy, so the sources of the energy, we have got that one is the natural source, and that is the man-made source, right? So natural source means that we have got the extraterrestrial, means the sun, cosmic, and the radio stars. And terrestrial, we talk about the electrostatic desire, atmospheric disturbances, lightning, and the precipitation, electricity. So these are the things which we talk in terms of the natural source. And the man-made means that, okay, generally that, okay, the, we have got the two type of the sources or the three type of the sources. Man-made means which are intentionally generated. Means the intentionally generated means the communication electronics, your broadcasts, relay communication, you have got the navigation, you have radar. You are intentionally generating these radiation. And that, you know, electrical power system generator, conversion of the conversion, transmission and distribution. Here the noise gets generated unintentionally. Your transformer, your distribution is not proper. Your transformers are making, you know, arcing is taking place. All the type of the noise gets it. Then the ignition system where the, you know, to burn the air fuel mixer that, okay, your arcing which is taking place, that gets to generate that noise. This is also unintentional. Your job is to just generate a pulse and to ignite the fuel air mixer. Similarly, we have got the different types of tools and machines. We have got the power tools, then the appliances, office app machines, industrial machine, transport, and that there's a lot of type of the electromagnetic uh, noise keeps on getting generated and they are all in unintentionally their job is something different but that due to the different type of the functioning of the electrical circuits that noise gets generated so you have got the man-made means that two type one is that you know intentional that which you generate which is required and that okay then on them is the unintentionally which is getting and third is the war time at the strategic type of the things what we talk about the thing in that one we have got the nuclear electromagnetic pulse by the nuclear electromagnetic nuclear detonation that the huge electromagnetic field can be get generated and then the non nuclear electromagnetic pulse nowadays that okay the work is going on that okay without uh, having the uh, nuclear detonation 
can we generate the electromagnetic pulse that is called the non-nuclear electromagnetic pulse and you must be hearing somewhere e-bombs and the type of the things so they are the non uh, nuclear electromagnetic then we have got the rf weapons rf weapons means that now the uh, high power microwave weapons are the thing because they are uh, uh, very effective in the particular swam type of the attacks from the drone you know that our um, uh, drones and uh, type if they are coming in the swam then there is a to that we have laser and the guns will not be able to then only the RF weapon because you can make a beam wider and can put more energy can uh, you know have the soft kill of those things and ultra wide band system you are have got the ultra wide band system we are talking about the hundreds of picosecond rise time pulses which can generate the strong electromagnetic field at a distance uh, particular distance and create the thing so these are the some of the very important field in which the research is work is going on and the futuristic lot of things and, and NEMP is not the futuristic it is the nuclear uh, weapon uh, that effects was well known from the long back from the 1962 onwards is a very effectively known as the thing but uh, other RF weapons and uh, non uh, NEMP weapons and the e-bombs and the ultra wide band system in this one the lot of electromagnetic work is going on and the one of the most important aspects because that you are attending the thing that okay whether it is the uh, NEMP simulator whether it's the RF weapons whether it's ultra wideband simulators that finally you have to put the energy into the space then the accordingly the what type of the antennas are required to generate that type of the thing if you are talking about the EMP type of the field is the impulse so that you require the impulse radiating antenna type of the thing so uh, we have got uh, you know that uh, you know this is the intrinsic noise i am not going much detail about that the thermal or see the passive resistors noise that is the your um, gaussian distribution noise or the kelvin noise whatever the ways and the short key noise is short or active noise scintillation flicker and the delay or recombination those who work on the receiver side they all take care of this one to have the less uh as you know as uh, snr as well as a low noise amplifier in particularly <clears throat> then we have got as i told that okay electromagnetic war time then emp i told you non-nuclear emp then the ultra wideband system rf weapons spm and the tempest tempest is the eavesdropping from the it equipment so, right so that is the other one that okay you can do the eavesdropping from the radiation <clears throat> Now, you know that uh, when we are talking about the spectrum of these particular thing in the frequency domain, we have got that, you know, lightning is the one of the natural resource. So the lightning, if I see that it is a double exponential pulse. So if I see that, okay, spectrum, it is about say very high uh, up to 10th of megahertz of the frequencies. Then we have got the high altitude electromagnetic pulse which is goes up to something around say 300 to 400 of the megahertz of the frequencies frequency components are there this is also a double exponential pulse right then we have got that you know ultra wideband or say short pulses which are going up to the tens of more than the tens of the gigahertz of the frequencies then we have got that you know some of the pulses the moderate band pulses they are like that damp sinusoid type of the waveform damp sinusoid type of the waveform you have got the bandwidth up to say reaching about say 800 900 of the megahertz of the frequency then you have got these are the narrow band signals right these are the narrow band signals means a particularly the high power microwave high intensity radio frequency interference and all that thing these are the thing so now that and that this is our the emi environment what we defined in this one so this is the electromagnetic spectrum up to say that you know i'm talking about say tens of gigahertz or maybe that 40 gigahertz type of the thing so this particular requirements lightning requirement high power electromagnetic ultra wideband and the, this thing has to be well defined into the beginning of the design when i was talking about the product development if this is not de defined because today that okay you say that okay i have got i have taken care for the lightning tangents right so then in that case you have taken care up to 10 megahertz 10 megahertz means that okay uh, your 30 meter is the wavelength 
So you design everything accordingly in the wave domain, in the frequency domain, according to that, considering in that one. Tomorrow, say somebody say, no, 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 I have, uh, you know, system to be protected for the, you know, a weapon, which is a high power weapon, which is there at me at, at a 10 gigahertz. So your wavelength is only three centimeter of the type of the thing. So that particular protection, that technique, you cannot do that one. You cannot do any retrofit, another thing. You have to redesign the whole the system, right? So this is the one of the most important thing that, okay, this electromagnetic environment has to be defined in the beginning when you are developing your system. It cannot be add on into the future because either all your uh, protection circuits and all that and what we require will be accordingly. So that's why we, I was saying that, okay, is the lightning electromagnetic, you know, this is in the time domain, lightning uh, electromagnetic pulse in the, it is the microsecond to the millisecond pulse, right? It's, uh, you know, it's field, uh, it's current is quite high, you know, in the nuclear electromagnetic, where this rise time is the, the 1.8 nanosecond and this uh, half magnitude full width is about 23 to 25 nanosecond is the time. So the LEMP, you know, is the type of the protection what you have got that is a microsecond. You have the microsecond means the hundreds of nanosecond response time system will work for the LEMP protection. But the NEMP the, will bypass by the time because its total duration is only 25 nanoseconds. So this is the one of the most important thing what the because and what the way that okay, design techniques has to be developed. Then we have got the electrostatic discharge, human body itself has got some type of the capacitance which is stores. When it discharges through that one, a strong pulse of the thing can be generated and the field near to that one, because you will be discharging, it is very close to the electronic circuit, then it will create the problem. Then we have got the high power microwave uh, pulse. It is a pulse, but in, the, in this pulse that we have got the RF embedded that one. That's why that is a narrow band system because it's a high power microwave. You can put the antennas through the antennas, maybe 40 to 50 dB gain of the antenna with the type of the high power. And when I'm talking one term, I will tell you that, okay, this high power microwave when I'm talking is that one, is that we talk high power microwave in case of this community is that that when the peak power is more than the 100 megawatts of the peak power. So we, we have got the wave particle interaction to generate this high power microwave by the relativistic electron beams with the different structure. It can be a workator, it can be the myelomagnetic insulated uh, oscillator, self oscillator, then we can have that, you know, BWOs, or say that we can have the klystron, relativistic klystron or relativistic magnetron type of the thing we are, uh, in the BRC, we are able to generate the this high power microwave, the peak power as good as about say one gigawatt of the peak power. So that's why that to give the weapons which will be coming from the ultra wideband system. As I told you, the hundreds of picosecond, they have got the wide band, and they are with the can be radiated with the I'm truth limiting thing. There's that the system which generates this ultra wideband system. You can search in the Google that is a Jolt, J, J O L T, Jolt. You can see in the Google, then that see that, okay, read about the thing, how much is the got the electromagnetics on that one. Uh, then uh, we have got that, that is that about the emissions, what we talk about the thing, first block. Then we have got the receptor, last block. Last block means that, okay, we have got the energies with the human being also, animals, plants, all these are the natural uh, you know, receptors of the electromagnetic energy. But man-made uh, one is the receivers. They are the intentionally they will be receiving, whether the broadcasting, relay communication, non-relay communication, radar, steady phone, navigation. Then the industrial, we have got the control, amplifiers, sensors, computers. Then the consumer means the audio, hi-fi, biomedical, computer, public address system. Then ordnance, we have got the pyro devices, electric uh, explosive devices, and the fuels. These are the ordnance uh, type of the thing. Uh, then coming to the one of the most important thing, that is just uh, try to give your attention uh, in this one. That this is the center block, which is called the coupling channel, coupling channel, which we call the transfer media or the coupling channel. There are the two coupling channel. One is called the, the, the radiated coupling channel. 
right radiated coupling channel means that when the energy getting coupled directly from the uh, source to the receptor and in the radiated mode and when it is conducting from the source to the susceptor in the conducted channel you have to identify when you are solving this electromagnetic emi emc problem so everything depends upon this so radiated uh, coupling channel is the first is the e field coupling channel or say capacitive coupling channel right so e field coupling channel or say capacitive coupling channel and the other one is the inductive coupling channel or the s field coupling channel and third is the electromagnetic field coupling channel which is the inter-system problem type of the thing so i will explain you what is this coupling channels out there in conducted channels we have got the common source impedance coupling channel and the common ground impedance channel because the coupling which takes place from the source to susceptor identifying which way it is taking place first the thing whether is a radiated coupling channel whether is a conductive coupling channel in that one also radiated coupling channel you have to find out it is a near field capacitive or inductive coupling channel or is the electromagnetic field coupling because the solution for them is the complete different one cannot solve the other problem and similarly common ground impedance coupling channel common uh, source impedance coupling channels are different so I uh, talk to you about their uh, common uh, uh, capacitive coupling channel. Suppose you have got a noisy circuit this and this is your receptor circuit and the, the noise is getting coupled from the, this A to B by a capacitive coupling means the electric field is getting coupled from the A to B, right? So. <clears throat> This particular, if I draw equivalent circuit of this particular, there is a capacitor, right? There is a capacitor which is getting, uh, you know, that uh, energy from here is transferred to this circuit, to this capacitor, because all high frequency noise will go there. Now, the how to, uh, this is the call the capacitive coupling. How to solve this problem? Huh? See, if I see the noise which gets coupled to this B is a J omega, J omega, uh, C1, C2 uh, and uh, RBM type of the thing will be there. So now that okay, this stray capacitance is the one of the most important uh, thing which is to be reduced, right? Which is to be reduced or which is to be eliminated. So one is that okay, you can put them apart. You can take them a particular distance, but you cannot take all them that are so apart because in the requirement may not be there. So, but if, even if you put that, you know, A from the A to B slightly away, then the uh, strict capacitance in if the distance, it uh, falls um, fast, but after some time it becomes the saturated. It doesn't fall at all. In that case that, okay, we have got the solution because I will not ask the thing because I, when the, you know, that uh, when we are, uh, with the asking the questions and all that one but here, here i will say we put a shield here we put a shield between the a and b circuit and then sealed is to be uh, you know then the shield is to be grounded not to be grounded where it is to be grounded so i will give you that okay shielding is the one of the solution for the capacitive coupling so that you put a seal and if it is a low frequency less than about a megahertz about a 500 kilohertz of the frequency you seal is to be grounded at the a end with the source end it is to be grounded right and that if it is that you know the circuit is uh, from 500 megahertz to the 5 giga no, 500 kilohertz to the 5 megahertz of the thing you ground the seal at the by hybrid grounding. Hybrid grounding means the shield is grounded at this particular place and by that a capacitor or a inductor, right? Capacitor inductor is to be connected so that at the higher frequency, lower frequencies, if I connect a inductor here at the lower frequency, it is still solved. So I require a capacitor to be connected at the lower frequencies of that one, it will give me single seed. And but for the higher frequencies, it will give me the uh, sort. So there's a hybrid grounding. But after 5 megahertz onwards, you ground the seal wherever it is possible. You ground the seal, right? So this is the way that you have to solve the problem. But 
Now what happens in the case of the inductive coupling, the thing, one uh, cable is there, one circuit is there, another circuit is there. So the one that the current, if it is flowing, there is a magnetic field. The second uh, circuit or second cable will have the, will get induced the field in this one, right? So the magnetic flux lines uh, leads from coupling from uh, one to the two. Then if I draw equivalent circuit of this particular one, it is the mutual inductance between that one. There is no direct current, but it is the mutual inductance between them will be the flux which will be going from the uh, first circuit to the second circuit. So the noise which is going in the second circuit, it is a J omega B A cos theta, right? B is the, you know, magnetic flux. A is the area of the loop, right? This area of this particular circuit, cos theta is the angle between them. Now that okay, in this particular case, I cannot reduce the B because this is the current which is flowing. This is the required current. So it is the area of the loop. I can reduce the area of the loop. I can do the twisting of the cable. I can run that, you know, VCC very close to the ground or say that, okay, that cable with where that, you know, big loop is forming, we can reduce the loop area. Okay. So this is the way that, okay, we uh, do this uh, uh, thing in the case and the cos theta is that, okay, we always say that, okay, in the, those who are working on the PCB design and other things from the noisy circuit to the, you know, sensitive circuit that put them in the cross, so the, you know, when the multi uh, layers boards are there, the top layer to the bottom layer, the, they are being put, not that they, they are not going to be put parallel, because cos theta will be zero, will give the maximum uh, induction, so that. Now the question comes either if I put a shield, whether it will work or not. Right. If I put a shield in this particular one, shield will not work. As I told you that when I was talking to the, you know, uh, this is a magnetic field. This is the current source. So the impedance is low. A shield, shield means that it has got the impedance uh, ZS equal to square root of J omega uh, epsilon by sigma. Sigma is the conductivity of the material. So it is a very small. So the wave impedance of this particular uh, field which gets generated and the shield also has got the low impedance, then the field penetrates inside that. And this is the you know, impedance matching takes place. So field will penetrate and it will penetrate inside. The shielding will not work in the case of your magnetic shield. So it is only the thing, one of the most important aspects of uh, this particular one. And when we are talking about these two noise, that the one thing that, okay, you just see that, okay, your capacitive coupling noise comes into the parallel. And the, the inductive coupling noise comes into the series. You have to identify by the techniques that, okay, you can read the Henry or noise reduction techniques, uh, volume two or edition two of that particular book. It is available in the net and other thing you can just see. And that uh, you can read it the second chapter or the second or third chapter you can read and then you can find out how this inductive and the capacitive coupling can be identified as the, this is the series and the ones that you know that okay it is the capacitive coupling then you have to do the shielding if it is the inductive coupling you have to reduce the loop area you have to put them in the cross uh, in such a way that okay coupling takes place but uh, uh, accordingly that okay you have to do that's why that okay you must be thinking why we use that okay twisted pair cable twisted you know bear cable twisted pair with the seal cable twisted pair with the double seal type of the cable why we use the twisting we do that okay so that loop area can be reduced and that okay sealing we do so that the capacitive coupling or say e field coupling can be reduced but in the case of electromagnetic field coupling, in the case of electromagnetic field coupling, uh, you can, uh, 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 the, in that case, shielding is the only solution. In that case of the electromagnetic field coupling, the shielding is the thing, electromagnetic field coupling, I'm talking about the far field type of the field, means the wave impedance is the 377 ohm, and the shield will have the low impedance, so it is the shielding is the only solution for the, you know, so, and then coming to the, 
coming to the you know conducted coupling channel there is the thing suppose i have got a circuit one the circuit two the common ground and impedance coupling and then we have got a see like in most of the platforms your car have to battery is negative your car body is negative our tank body is negative our aircraft body is negative our ship body is negative like that okay any platform if you say that okay wherever your vcc or say that your uh, positive comes and that okay negative you come, can always connect through the ground or say that okay you generally connect through the ground that negative so in this particular case suppose a circuit one so that you have connected it to the ground and that okay through this ground impedance jet g is connected other circuit is also connected which has got the with the current ig2 it develops the voltage vg2 and it develops the voltage vg1 through the current ig across the jet g right now what happens suppose this circuit is a high current uh, carrying circuit so the voltage drop is very high this voltage drop will also appear it will also lift the voltage of this right so that this will be a lifting of the voltage will take place in your circuit so that will be the problem so what you have to do is that one you have to reduce this uh, jet g but jet g cannot be reduced because see that some length of the conductor will give you always the r plus j omega l will always will be there so this j omega l will be there so now that in this particular case being it is a conducting from one circuit to the other circuit so this particular noise cannot be removed by the filtering this particular noise can be removed you take the conductor and bring that your uh, you know the ground at the work this point and bring your ground up so this is called the single point grounding removes the common mode noise in the by the common mode um, ground impedance coupling that's called the jet g coupling is the common mode noise and it can be uh, it can be only reduced by your uh, single point grounding so there is nothing like the filtering what you use in this case now in the case of the conducted uh, coupling channel by the common source of any power supply which is connected to the different circuit should have the zero impedance but no power supply will have the zero impedance so you have got in the pcb you take that okay different ic's from the vcc and grounds are been put in the different places so what happened one circuit is switching and the noise is generated from here it will conduct through this uh, common source impedance and appear in the second circuit so in this particular one this is a noise which is going in the this circuit is called the common source impedance noise and this noise can only be eliminated by the filtering by the filtering so the filters can be used the, we generally say that okay use the filter where from the noise is getting generated because otherwise noise if you did not filter it it will be conducting through this cable and it will radiate also so generally uh, we talk about this one but sometimes what happens like in the some circuits and other thing this particular uh, circuit two suppose is a very high current rating so making a filter for that one because the inductance to realize that one if it is drawing say 100 amperes so realize a 2 milli henry inductance itself that okay sometimes the uh, filter itself becomes the bigger than that one then what we do in that case what we do, we don't you make the filter for this particular circuit too we make that you know circuit you know filters for the lesser sensitive or lesser current rating filters so the size and other thing can be controlled accordingly okay so this is the thing so now that okay i was telling the common ground impedance uh, problem you use by the single point grounding and then okay you solve the common source impedance problem by that you know different type of the filters uh, so the, when we are talking about the mitigation now that okay we again come to that one we have a source you have got the coupling channel you have the receptor so at the source what you do that one source you reduce the noise at the source itself but the reducing the noise at the source itself is only possible not for the natural source
ਇਹ ਕੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਰਿਪੇਅਰ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ are you not able to hear me sir uh, we can hear you you can hear na oh. yes sir so that you can mute it and yes so this is the source what you can do that locate and suppress the noise and it is only that noise what you can suppress is the thing that unintentional noise and second one is the thing at the receptor you sensitize your receptor in such a way that it doesn't respond to that type of the noise right but uh, or say that okay we talk in terms of the thing that don't use maybe very sensitive circuit if it is not required for you right and third thing is the thing that okay break this coupling channel break the coupling channel so how to do this particular one which is called the emi control or say emi mitigation techniques how to break this coupling channel by the you know breaking the coupling channel uh the is the thing that okay we break the coupling channel by shielding filtering grounding isolation balancing you know impedance control type of the techniques what we use for the mitigation or say controlling this one so whenever we are controlling that okay noise sources we have got the three you know four type of the approaches first is the crisis approach crisis approach means the system is ready it has gone in for the emi emc evaluation and if it is not meeting the requirement it means that okay now it has to be solved and in that particular time as i told you that okay if the electromagnetic environment is not properly de defined properly so then uh, during the testing time you can't do that one so what you would do that okay you can start adding that okay you use some tape you use some hanging filters and other thing it is called the banded solution right the medical banded like that okay equipment comes out from that you know emi mc chamber when it comes out it looks like that okay a, a wounded person is coming from the hospital so similarly the type of the thing in the crisis approach means it is the last approach follow the standards and specification as i told you there are the so many standards and specification which are well defined well written but uh, following the standards and specification if they have not been followed properly then we land up into the problem of uh, over design then the analysis and prediction techniques as i told told you computational electromagnetic techniques has become the very powerful techniques after that you know you know that uh, uh whether you use the fm analysis method of moment you use that or finite difference and domain method you use or finite difference frequency domain method you use you use uh, you know any asymptotic method That's, uh, these are the beautiful techniques which are commercially available but only suggestion or only my advice to you people please select the proper tool which you are using to solve the accordingly to that one there are so many hybrid techniques and other things are there but this is the one of the most important thing designers or say anywhere that okay this gives the real solution nowadays and the system approach okay you can have the top down approach because you select from the thing which are the standards and specification suppose this is going for the aircraft or it is going for the missile or it is going for the, the commercial industrial area or other thing accordingly you make your requirements and that okay this is the way that okay system level requirement then the sub system level requirement then the equipment level requirement then the circuit level requirement then the component level requirement then I, what i am trying to say you is that one right emc designer everywhere you start from the circuit level right then you start from the board level then you go at the box level then you go at the sub system level then you go at the system level right so when i am talking about the circuit level means that okay i see type of selection common filtering and mounting thing high level signal band limiting rf input low power case spectrum limiting fast as slugging i mean that okay non linear devices these are the 
linear divisor and component selection. Now the component also according to that, what type of environment it is going to withstand, right? There are different type of the components you have to select the, at the circuit level. Once the circuit level is there at the board, when you are designing the uh, board, because say that, uh, you know, 24, 28, 32 level boards are, has become very common nowadays, then the decoupling capacitor is one of the most important thing that try to understand what the decoupling coupling is used. Is, uh, you know, application notes also you see in the different places. Because the decoupling capacitor is not only for the, uh, the, you know, passing the noise, it is also the supply during the thing when the switching on and off taking place. Because the design of the decoupling is the one of the most important aspects in the uh, board level. RF layout techniques in the digital boards, particularly there, you have to find out up to what frequency these are. That's why I say that, okay, days have gone when that okay, digital and RF circuit people were the separate piece. No, I know only digital as no only. It is not that today is the not the this way. Even that, okay, the you know, the, uh, the digital circuit has become so fast, it is not the five megahertz clock, clock or say uh, one megahertz clock, it's the clock size increased so high, their speed has become so high, so that RF, it, it is the uh, digital circuit design is as good as the RF circuit design, so they don't uh, have this particular one. And the high level uh, circuits, then the band limiting RF inputs, then the board grounding, how you do that uh, most of the time that okay, digital circuit, how to ground with the analog circuit, digital ground bounds and other thing comes in the analog. Then the use of surface mount component, then the minimize the track loop area, as I told that okay, the, the differential mode radiation can be reduced by the large RF ground plate for the thing so that okay, you get the better uh, sync for the noise. <laughs> Uh, see that uh, as I was telling that uh, RF and digital has become the thing so that it, uh, earlier days the antenna at nowadays that okay when the antenna beam forming and the thing digital beam forming and other thing has come so antenna person is the antenna to the RF to the digital system he has to be the you know a type of the all the three things he should be um, you know expert on this one when he's designing it's not the thing only to design some type of the patch antenna this particular okay those patch and other things are the standards and other thing it is the cavity pack or is the you know defective ground plane and all that one these are the part of the thing but now today you have to make the as you are knowing about the massive mimo and other thing what the type of the things you have to do uh, then you have got the box label, box label, the EMI gasket, the type of the EMI gasket you have to select in the electrochemical series point of the shielded cables. So it is a surface transfer impedance of the chassis grounding to the structure, how you do that one. Avoid cable routing near to the aperture, connector with the 360 degree back cell coverage, filter connector, grounding plan, and the screen of the box with the minimum apertures so that, that you can design the <clears throat> seal it. Then the subsystem label, then the RF gasket, differential uh, interfaces, opto isolator, sealed it power and uh, signal cables, cable seal grounding, how you ground them. So all these are and in the system label that you keep on doing that type of the thing. So these are the different parts so that each has got is in the each talk. Uh, so that uh, I just put in this particular form so that I can cover these things. Now, as I was telling that, okay, the, you know, breaking the coupling channel, you have got the shielding, filtering, grounding and bonding. Shielding is the part of the thing which is you will do from the radiated field. Filtering means the conducting channel is going to go inside the filtering and shielding and filtering will work good if it's a good grounding. And grounding has to be done bonded properly. Bonded means that, okay, you have to reduce the impedance with the thing. So it is bonded with the properly. Then the isolation. Uh, you can uh, have the balancing, orientation, separation, and all this particular work. Then, uh, you know, what the way that, okay, that was the shielded box is there, so the different cables are going, there's the ventilation and all the type of the things what you do. 
isolated supply that okay you uh, do the isolation of the supplies you know that you have got the analog supply your digital supply of this the ground intertie that okay there's a node current is flowing this is the idealistic situation but it is not the, exactly the case that what happens is that okay your digital circuit is the analog circuit there is the common ground which is there so the noise voltage vn which gets uh, induced in this one which appears in the analog circuit right so that okay when the circuit you know digital circuit is the v noise which is there and the impedance this type of the noise you will have then uh, you know that mixed signal how you ground that one i'm just going in the detail in the design so i think that uh, i will uh, say that okay how you do that one don't do this type of the circuit because the noise couples in this one so generally for the single type of the adc you bring the digital ground to the digital supply and uh, digital analog ground to analog the adc digital and analog uh, ground and then uh, analog circuit analog ground and other types of thing and then do this grounding sorting at the place of the adc right don't do at the power supply level but when you have got the number of adcs in that particular case you ground the uh, you know digital ground and analog ground at the supply level right so this is the otherwise it should be separate it should not be that in the otherwise it is big loop you will keep on making the circuit this strategy i will just uh, skip from here and then uh, there's uh, so many other things are there so now that when the, we talk about the inter-system EMI problem control, as I told you that, okay, shielding, grounding, filtering, isolation, and other thing is been there to control your uh, direct coupling, that is your um, uh, radiated coupling, means the uh, inductive coupling, capacitive coupling, and electromagnetic field coupling. And that, okay, the, then to solve that uh, coupling channel by the... Uh, Conducted means the common ground coupling channel and common source impedance coupling channel, right? This is the way you can uh, solve the problem. But what happens that when the system has gone into the field? So there that, okay, that what the way that uh, management is to be done, it, they are the management te techniques. It is not that here the, the, you know, designer doesn't come into the picture. Is the frequency management, transmitter, bandwidth, harmonic filters, and all these things to be used. Receiver means there should be pre-selector, IF filter, band reject filter, frequency assignment by analysis, because see that what the frequency where you should work. Then the time management, that a time sharing, synchronization or suppression systems for particularly for radars. Location management means the distance management, separation means the space management type of the antenna separation, system location, and direction management. The one is that, okay, you can do the polarization if there are certain systems which have got vertical polarization, you can work on the horizontal polarization if the uh, your um, uh, polarization uh, management is good. Then the sector blanking, you don't trade it towards the system where we are going to. These are the things which we keep on doing very often. But this is particularly for common, uh, you know, communication. And the communication that, okay, EMI, that, okay, antenna radius, antenna receives, and through the propagation pass and that electromagnetic interference also enters, and that will cause the interference to the communication system. So when the received power uh, is uh, greater than the transmitted power minus loss, right, then it is the RFI, the you know, interference will take place. So when the received from the noise and other thing is greater than the transmitted power minus loss, then it will land it to the other. And the interference in the these communication systems is that linear one, linear one means there is the co-channel interference within the selective curve is then the noise is adjacent channel, your intermodulation type of the problem, then the spurious rejection, uh, spurious sub reception means you have got the image frequency, you have got the local oscillators, harmonics, you have got the um, second local oscillator, you have got an IF frequency, image frequency, these are the different type of the channel where from the spurious channel, the energy goes into the system. Non-linear means that, okay, we have got intermodulation, cross-modulation, overload and desensitization and burnout of the front end or LNL type of the thing. So what we talk in terms of this uh, types of linear RFI that, okay, fundamental FIM, 
stim, rim, and sim. Fim means the fundamental interference margin, transmitter fundamental to receiver fundamental. Tim means the transmitter interference margin, transmitter fundamental to receiver is spurious. Rim means receiver interference margin is receiver fundamental to the transmitter is spurious. And sim means spurious interference margin and transmitter is spurious and the receiver is spurious. So with this one, this is the thing when the transmitter uh, fundamental receiver uh, you know fundamental transmitter fundamental and the receiver is spurious tim and the rim means okay receiver uh, fundamental and transmitter uh, harmonics and uh, you have got the spurious of uh, transmitter is spurious of the receiver so these are the things which we require for the amplitude and frequency cutting whenever we do the frequency management these are the type of the thing which are the uh, you know, for the uh, uh, frequency management and frequency assignment, these analysis is done. So, standards and specification, as you see the same block that, okay, we have the specification, as I told that, okay, there are the standards and specification. So, electromagnetic uh, emissions, which are coming, means the first block of the thing means that, okay, you have got the conducted emission, then you have got the radiated emissions, right? So similarly that, okay, last block means the receptor block that, okay, it has got the noise which is going to the conductor susceptibility CS and that radiated which is directly radiated and going inside the system. So means there are that uh, two type of the requirement. One is that, okay, emission, you should control the emission within your system. Emission means that radiated emission and conducted emission and that you should have the immunity or say, you know, that uh, sufficient susceptibility so that withstanding capacity of the uh, conducted susceptibility noise which is conducting through the power cable, interconnecting cables and other things. And same time with the radiated susceptibility means the field which is coming from the uh, radiated mode and that directly coming inside the system. So from that particular one in the defense millistandard now the I will say millistandard CISPR also there are so many specifications C marking, CISPR marking, IEC and uh, these are the specifications which are there in the CISPR because see that we don't have at the moment our own so what we are following the CISPR requirements in our country but uh, for the uh, for the automotive thing, which are the mandatory requirement, which are uh, automotive for all the vehicles, whether it's a car, a scooter, or bike, anything which is coming, it meets the EMI MC requirement and very stringent requirements of that. So emission means that, okay, we have got the conducted emission, different type of the label, low frequency, mid frequency, then the spurious and harmonic. Similarly, the radiated emission, magnetic field, electric field, then the spurious and harmonic. This is the audio frequency, you know, this is a, um, you know, uh, intermodulation, this is the spurious rejection, cross modulation, this is a conductive susceptibility, inductive type, this is the RF immunity, then the transient immunity, this is the EMP type immunity, this is a lightning uh, uh, current, then this, uh, our um, uh, ESD type of, then the magnetic field susceptibility, this is the induction field susceptibility, this is the radiated field for the electric field for the different, then this is the EMP type of the susceptibility. With this one, uh, word of caution, those who keep on following this uh, compliance with the millisecond of ocean does not guarantee electromagnetic compatibility, nor performance of equipment in actual environment. This only increases the probability and uh, of compatibility. Strict vigilance is, is still needed for that. So in the thing that, okay, we called a reverse sword in the case of the electromagnetic compatibility design. When you are in the concept stage, design stage, production marketing, this is the system engineering style. So concept stage, you have got the so many options which are available. When that you go keep on increasing in the system design stage, then when you come to that one, your uh, options also keep on decreasing and cost keeps on increasing. So this is the way that, okay, this is one of the most important aspects. So one has to take care of that. And then um, mission of electronic equipment, subsystem systems and their efficiency depends upon the ability to achieve and maintain EMC in an intentional, an intentional electromagnetic environment. Thus the field of EMIMC calls for regular interaction between the engineers, means that those who are the designers, right? Then that, okay, managers, those who are that, you know, system managers, okay, uh, project managers, 
then the investigation those who are uh, doing that solve you know what type of the uh, you know investigations has to be then the controllers those clear uh, you know clear the equipment for that it meets that the requirement emi you see so emic so that okay you can write that okay this is finally the interaction of engineers managers investigators and the controllers this is achieved right from the inception through the design and the development total integration up to the production stage a marketing strategy because see the uh, I'm saying that okay if it is not done properly that the way that we are struggling to, to you know I have to rush to the LRD because see there is one system is for last about say uh, one month is lying with the, in LRD and it is not meeting the requirement and uh, if it is not meeting the requirement it cannot go for the trial so that uh, uh, I tell you that okay if we I have seen the systems if they are not meeting the requirement. So when the PDC is T, the PDC is uh, T time plus that some testing time is the delta T, right? PDC of the time T is that PDC of the time T plus delta T. So I have seen that okay, sometimes the delta T becomes the more than the T. So that then the equipment has not gone into the services, particularly in our defense space. You can uh, think that how difficult it becomes for an engineer who has uh, burned his night lamps for three years and the three, four years. And after that, his uh, subunit, his uh, LRU, his SRU, or say his unit is not incorporated into the, uh, uh, in the, in, into the particular platform. Then it is uh, quite uh, hard for that to you know that type of the mm, Thing. So, one has to be very careful about taking that understanding of this particular subject. With this one, I will close now the thing. Thank you very much. And that if you have any questions and other things, then I'm uh, ready for that. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now, participants, if you have any question, you can ask. Sir, uh, in setting a EMI EMC lab, what components or some uh, circuitry or some softwares are needed uh, that is uh, required. For setting up the software EMIMC lab or say that or you are talking about the uh, oh, oh, testing. testing, testing, testing facility. Testing, testing see that okay. <laughs> First thing you qual classified the two type of test facility. One is that okay, are you setting for the military standard or are you setting for the civilian standard, right? If you are setting for the military standards or for civil standard, anywhere you will require the shielded enclosures, right? First, the thing is the shielded enclosure and these shielded enclosures lined with the uh, ferrites and the uh, radar absorbing material or say microwave absorbers, right? So this is the, called the anechoic chamber. First, you will make anechoic chamber and the size of the anechoic chamber will depend upon that uh, what the frequency, uh, no, what the uh, specification. For milli standard, we measure at a distance of one meter. For the civilian standard, we measure at a distance of three meter, 10 meter, and 30 meter. So the size of the chamber decides, okay, which measurements you are going to do inside this chamber, right? And the second thing, another thing, this absorber, whether you use the ferrite or whether you use the microwave absorber only depends upon the thing. If you are using for the civilian specification, your reflectivity of the chambers is uh, 30 dB no, from the is from 30 megahertz so that you cannot have the absorbers at 30 megahertz. Uh, it becomes about say, five meter long. So you use the ferrite tiles so that the okay, lower frequency is looked after them. So this is from the thing. Then that call for the emission system. If for the emission system measurements, you require the different type of the current probes. You require the line impedance stabilization network for that your conducted measurement. For radiated emission measurement, you require the different type of antenna, loop antenna, rod antenna, 41 inch active rod antenna, then you use the biconical antenna, log periodic antenna, and the double ridge horn antenna. Then you require the EMI receiver. EMI receivers are slightly different than the spectrum analyzer because EMI receiver has got the pre-selector. 
because the spectrum analyzer front end is fully open where the EMI receiver you require because EMI receiver has got the CISPR measurement capability. It can measure the quasi peak and uh, quasi peak measurement. Quasi peak means it charges, you know, detection circuit charges for 160 millisecond and discharges for 550 millisecond. So, this is the type of the circuits which you will require. For radiator susceptibility systems, you require that uh, signal sources, you require the amplifiers, then you require antennas, then you require the sensors to measure the field in that one, how much field you require. And this is the definitely a costly affair. Suppose you have to generate 10 volt per meter, 20 volt per meter, 100 volt per meter, like that we generate for the automotive system and for the defense system, we generate as large as 200 volts per meter system. That is from the right from that you are uh, 10 kilohertz to 40 gigahertz type of the thing. Then for radiator susceptibility system, we have got the different uh, transient sources. We have got the damp sinusoid transient sources, we have got the electric fast transient sources, we have got uh, ESD sources, all these type of the systems will be there. And these are the things, there will be this chamber will be, there will be a control room in which these all instrumentation will be there. For the conducted susceptibility and the conducted emissions, you don't require the shielded enclosure. You can do them in the outside, but radiated emission and radiated susceptibility, you always require a shielded enclosure. I think that. Anyone else? If anybody have any question. I think Dr. Rajesh. Nobody has the question, so. Okay. I think, uh, sir, nobody has any question now. So, uh, okay, then we will thank our speaker. So, thank you very much, sir, for accepting our invitation and give this uh, actually wonderful talk, I would say, because a lot of information is there, and this is not a unique topic in institutes. This is yeah. an uncommon topic because. Uh, this course is not available in various institutes. So, I will I will share this in the PDF form. This uh, my note, this course notes. You can give it to them because see that these all information will not be available in the different books, whether Henry Ott, whether that you know Clayton Paul or say any book. These things. This is. Uh, you know, for my last 40 years, I was able to put. Yes, home. sir. Yes, sir. We know very well, sir. Yeah. Yes, so this can be, I will share with you and then uh, you can uh, share with the other. Yes, yeah, sure, sir. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Right, right then. Eh? Right. Have a good day, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you, my dear. Thank you, sir. Sir, any instruction regarding next session? I think uh, there is no instruction. Uh, now we have one offline session, which is fabrication and measurement related. Then uh, the next lecture will be uh, by Professor KP Ray. It will be online. So we will tell you the time and we'll share the link. Okay, thank you, sir. As you all know, I have the link of this uh, talk, next talk, but uh, I will confirm the time again. So participants can leave. They may join later.